Tonight is the night Governor Ron DeSantis is expected to announce that he is running for president in the Republican Party in 2024. He's supposed to announce this tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern. He's slated actually to announce it in an unprecedented forum. He's going to speak with Elon Musk on Twitter to make this announcement. So that's exciting. We are going to have a watch party. We're going to, on the Liz Wheeler Show community on Locals, that's lizwheeler.com slash locals. We're gonna watch it together. We're gonna live stream it and you should join us. You should go to lizwheeler.com slash locals, 6 p.m. We'll probably start it just a couple minutes before the hour so that we can make our predictions and chit chat a little bit before it gets started. So maybe five till 10 till six, um, so that's 6 p.m. Eastern again. Um, to watch this. It's going to be really fun. It's going to be interesting. And then we're going to analyze it and pick it apart and do what we love to do, which is criticize <laughs> criticize politicians, even the politicians that we appreciate the most. Um, go to lizwheeler.com for all the details. That's lizwheeler.com for all the details. And by the way, make sure while you're over there to sign up for my brand new email list so that I can notify you every time we go live, just in case you happen to be a delinquent on that day and you didn't listen to the show in the morning and hear me announce it to you like this. If you're on my email list, I can tell you even if you missed the show. So go to lizwheeler.com, drop me your email address so that we can always be in touch. Um, and on that note, welcome to the Liz Wheeler Show. The Liz Wheeler Show today, uh, we have a lot to talk about today. A lot of big topics, including something that we should, without shame, we should be celebrating. We should be taking a victory lap because the executives at Target in the wake of our boycott of Target, because Target is targeting our children, grooming our children with transgender merchandise for so-called Pride Month, Target executives have reportedly held an emergency phone call. An emergency phone call that lasted, we've heard, maybe 15 minutes, talking about what certain stores in certain areas of the country, certain red areas of the country, should do in the wake of their consumers strongly opposing the merchandise that's being presented to children. The merchandise we talked about earlier in the week, such as um, a designer that is a Satanist, a designer making merchandise for your children that made a t-shirt um, that said, Satan loves pronouns. So it's little wonder that you and I are looking at Target and thinking, well, what Target's doing is about a million times worse than what Bud Light did. And uh, Target deserves the Bud Light treatment. We absolutely should Bud Light target. Because what Target is doing is they're targeting our children, and I say that, I'm not trying to make a pun here. They literally have a bullseye on the back of our children. Their um, chest binders is one of the products that they're offering. Tucking, a bathing suit, a tucking bathing suit. Do you even know what that is? I can't even, I can barely bring myself to describe what that is. It is a female bathing suit with extra room in the crotch so that men who want to identify as transgender women can tuck their genitalia from sight. Does that disgust you? Well, it should. It's disgusted a lot of people across the country and Target executives are freaking out about it behind the scenes. So what we're gonna start the show with today is we are going to explore the details. What was said on this call? How freaked out are Target executives? Which means how powerful are we? See, this is the main point here. So often we feel helpless. We feel like our votes might not matter. We feel our politicians don't listen to us. We feel that we're governed and ruled by bureaucrats in the administrative state. But let me tell you, my friends, we have found something. We have found something very powerful. We have found a way to affect change with our day-to-day -day actions, with our purchases, with our values, that, that reflects our values, and corporations are starting to take note. I said at the very beginning that our boycott of Bud Light is not going to result in Bud Light rejecting Dylan Mulvaney. They're not going to issue an apology. They're not going to tell us what we want to hear, which is, we apologize for partnering with Dylan Mulvaney, a man pretending that he's a woman. We understand that this is not only anti-biology, we understand that it's offensive to the values of the consumers that make our business possible. We regret that we did this and we will never do this again. We reject queer theory. That's what it would take for me to uh, become a Bud Light consumer again, for me ever to buy another can of beer from Budweiser. It would take an apology like that. But our, our boycott, is not going to result in such an apology. And it's not even the point of the boycott. The point, the purpose of this boycott is to send a message to every other corporation in this country, to send a message that says, if you propagate queer theory, if you target especially children with the transgender ideology, we will end you. 
you and your business, your business, your entity will cease to exist in the marketplace because you need us. You need us for your business to succeed and we therefore have the power to stop your wokeness. So without further ado, we have much more about this emergency phone call with Target executives, so let's get to it. Okay guys, let's talk American heart for gold. I don't mean to sound doom and gloom when I say this, but I do feel that we are on the brink of a massive financial crisis. And I know I'm not alone in feeling this. You probably feel the same way because we've watched before our very eyes, just in the last couple months, Silicon Valley Bank collapse, then Signature Bank collapse, then First Republic Bank collapse. All the while, our Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen, admits that the FDIC and the Fed are going to pick and choose which banks to rescue based basically on wokeness. And so it brings me to question, is my money safe in our financial system? And I'll be honest and tell you, I don't feel confident that it is. That's why I highly recommend that you do what I did, call the only precious metals dealer I trust, American Hartford Gold. They make it simple and easy to protect your money, protect your savings, protect your retirement accounts with physical gold and silver. With one short phone call, they'll have physical gold and silver delivered right to your door. If you call them right now, they'll give you up to $1,500 of free silver on your first order. So don't wait. Call 866-781-7499. That's 866 786- 781-7499. Or if you prefer text message, text Liz to 65532. Again, the phone number to call is 866-781-7499 or text Liz to 65532. Okay, so here's what we know about this emergency phone call that happened between Target executives. Let's back up for a second. Target for a long time, actually, it's, it's not just weeks, it's not just months, it's not just since last year. For decades now, Target has been a very woke corporation, right? Um, it's something that my mom said she recognized when we were children. She didn't shop there because of some of the pharmaceutical drugs that induce abortion that Target uh, peddled, they profited off of. Last year, Target rolled out a chest binder. It looks a lot like a sports bra, but it's not. It's intended to disguise female breasts for females who are quote unquote transitioning to males. But it it doesn't look that offensive. It looks a lot like just women's underclothes. So I think people were like, oh, that's really awful. But it didn't quite click in our minds to start a boycott. A couple of years before that, Target also made all of their bathrooms and their dressing rooms where you go to try on the clothes gender neutral. So you go into a Target now, you try on say a bathing suit, and in the little stall with just the half walls, you can basically see people's feet underneath, there could be a dude standing next to you if if you're a woman. It's a really unsettling feeling, it's not a comfortable feeling, but it was not until this year when Target's queer theory activism became so egregious that it was was a wake-up call for so many of us. We saw these clothing, this clothing and these these products that were aimed at children that Target prominently displayed at the front of their store. I'm talking onesies for babies still in diapers that um, is supposed to be gender neutral. And I'm not just talking about a gender neutral color. Like, I don't care if you dress your baby in yellow. I don't care if you dress your baby in green. That's not a girl or a boy color. I'm talking about products, t-shirts that say live laugh lesbian and um, waiting for girls with a, some kind of lesbian lesbian drawing on the front and another t-shirt that has naked transgender people on the front, right? Merchandise designed by not just a transgender person, not just for quote unquote pride month, but by a designer that identifies as a Satanist that says Satan loves pronouns. This is, this is creepy stuff and it's aimed at your children. It's aimed at kids. And don't tell me, I know there were some people on Twitter who were like, guys, conservatives, before you get all frothy at the mouth, remember that these these clothes don't turn children queer. These clothes are for the children of queer people. To which I respond, read queer theory for yourself. The moment that you read queer theory, you understand that no, these clothes are not for the children of queer people. These clothes, this merchandise is intended to sexualize children. It's intended to destroy the sexual innocence of children. It's intended to spark an identity crisis in children where they wonder, am I a boy? Am I a girl? Is there any such thing as the gender binary? What might I be? And when they're suffering from this this identity crisis, 
in swoops the teachers in the public schools saying, well, you know who you are. You don't have to be an oppressor. You can be a victim. You can be queer too. Which is why one out of every five Gen Zers now identifies as queer. So don't believe the leftist narrative and the leftist denial for one second. Of course this is targeting your kids. Obviously it's targeting your kids. And the purpose of that is to queer your children. So that my reaction right now, you're probably having the same reaction. People all across the country are having the same reaction. We're boycotting Target. I will never spend another dime of my money at Target. And I previously loved Target. I got tons of stuff at Target on a regular basis. I spent quite a bit of money there. And you can ask my husband. On Friday, this past Friday, Target executives got on the phone with managers of their stores, especially their stores in the South. And according to a Target insider, let me read what this Target insider said. This is what they said. We were given 36 hours, told to take all of our pride stuff, the entire section, and move it into a section that's a third the size. From the front of the store to the back of the store, you can't have anything on mannequins and no large signage. This is according to a Target insider who is not going to be named for obvious reasons, fear of retaliation. The Target insider said, we call our customers guests. There is an outrage on their part. This year, it's just exponentially more than any other year. I think, given the current situation with Bud Light, the company is terrified of a Bud Light situation. Now, my reaction to this is, as they should be, they should be terrified of a Bud Light situation because what Target is doing is one million times worse than what Bud Light did. One million times worse. If you have refused a, to drink a Bud Light, if you've refused to buy a Bud Light, if you've refused to stock Bud Light because of their partnership with Dylan Mulvaney, let me tell you, you should not spend a penny of your money ever, ever again at Target because of what they're doing here. But here's the thing, here's the thing. You might think, okay, well, they're reacting to market pressure. They're, they see the outrage of their consumers and they're actually doing the right thing. They're responding to this. Let me warn you away from this reaction. That's not a correctly ordered action. It's actually what Target executives are hoping that you will do because Target executives are not apologizing for this. Target executives are not discontinuing their support of a Satanist designing queer merchandise for your children. They're not removing this person from association from Target. They're not discontinuing selling tucking bathing suits and chest binders, none of that. No, they're moving it to a less obscure position in the store in hopes that that will distract us as consumers from seeing it. Now, it doesn't mean that they don't wanna target children with it. They just want to sell it and target children and also avoid our outrage. In other words, they think we're dumb. They think that if they can put it in a less obvious place that we won't react to it as strongly, that we won't oppose it. What this means is that you and I should react twice as strongly because it is true. They are responding to market pressure, which means it's going to hurt their business if they continue to do what they're doing. And by the way, on this call, according to this Target Insider, they're not admitting, the executives of Target are not admitting that the reason that they're um, moving merchandise is because their consumers don't want it and they respect their consumers. No, no, they're using two excuses for this. One is a lie and one is a false accusation. The lie is they say, we're moving the pride displays to the back of the store in some Southern states because we want to increase swim sales. Therefore, we want to prominently display swimsuits at the front of the store and said, that's obvious BS. Obviously, that is not true. They're doing it because people in red states in the South especially are going to refuse to shop at Target as long as they have these pride displays. So they're trying to hide it from people so that people forget about it and don't boycott. That is simply a lie. They're not admitting, hey, we don't want to be Bud Light. We don't want to reject the very people who make our business possible. No, no, in fact, they're demonizing. They're demonizing the people who make their business possible. They're demonizing you and me. They're demonizing us. In a Daily Beast article, there are Target executives who um, are talking about this reaction from us, this boycott from us, and they're saying, well, the reason that we're moving this stuff or the reason for this call is because our employees are in danger. Our employees are under threat of bodily harm because of the outrage of us who you know they consider to be transphobes and they wanna portray transphobes as violent terrorists. So 
first they lie about their reason and then they demonize the very consumers that they need for their business to be successful. So what is a proper response to this? Our proper response to this is, no, we don't applaud Target for moving their pride displays to the back and not targeting children as obviously, we double down. If they understand our outrage and not only ignore it, but falsely accuse us of being the evil ones, what possible justification could you ever have for spending money at Target? I'm not trying to put pressure on you. It's your moral decision whether you wanna boycott Target or not. I know that in some conservative circles, this is quite the debate. There are some people that are like, okay, but where do I shop to find affordable stuff? Target was where I got a lot of stuff. I get that. I've said a couple of times, I spent a lot of money at Target. I really like Target. I'm not too snooty, too snobby. I love Target. But how can you justify giving money to people who are targeting your children like this? I think, a lot of people feel the same way as I do. I think you feel the same way as I do. I think we are committed to this because not only is it right and good and proper and moral in this situation to hold Target accountable, just like it was right and good and proper and moral to hold Bud Light accountable, we have grabbed the reins of our own power and influence in our culture and are fighting back in a way that a lot of us felt we didn't have the power to do until very recently. If we adequately respond to what Target is doing, using the Bud Light playbook, refusing, as we refused when Bud Light tried to say, oh, we didn't mean to step on all of this. We didn't mean to be controversial. You know, we give to Republican candidates too. And we as conservatives said, nah, -uh. No, nah, we're not stupid. You're not going to fool us like that. Don't try to pander to us when you haven't apologized for what you did. If we apply that same playbook to Target, all of a sudden, my friends, we are a force to be reckoned with. We are a force that can overcome corporate wokeism in a way that our politicians have not been able to. And cultural influences within the culture have refused to do, we suddenly become the power players. And for that, we should actually be happy about Target's response, even if we don't accept, well, they didn't even apologize, so there's nothing to accept. Um, speaking of this playbook, let's talk about the LA Dodgers, shall we? But first, let me talk to you about bank on yourself. You and I have been brainwashed into believing that the only way to grow our money for retirement is to risk it in the stock market, but this is fake news, it is not true. You can reach your financial goals and dreams without taking unnecessary risks. For example, do you really control your retirement money? If you've got a 401k or an IRA or a similar retirement plan, the government actually controls it. They decide how much you can borrow and when you must pay it back, and you'll owe taxes and penalties for taking money out too soon or waiting too long, even though it's your money. And thanks to a skyrocketing national debt and a Congress that continues to spend like a drunken sailor, who knows how much you'll have to pay in taxes during a retirement that could, what, last 30 years? Bank on yourself is a better way to grow and protect your hard-earned money. This retirement plan alternative has never had a losing year in over 160 years. You are in control. You get access to your money for any purpose, with no questions asked, and without government penalties or restrictions on how much income you can take or when you can take it. Bank on yourself is a better way. Now you can get a free report with all the details on how the bank on yourself strategy adds guarantees predictability, tax savings, and control to your financial plan, just go to bankonyourself.com slash Liz. That's bankonyourself.com slash Liz. Okay, out on the West Coast, Los Angeles, the LA Dodgers, the baseball team. The LA Dodgers is gearing up to celebrate Pride Month. It's a lovely pattern that we've seen in corporations and organizations across the country. June is supposedly Pride Month. And in honor of Pride Month, and of course I say that ironically, the LA Dodgers issued an invitation to a group of transgender strippers that call themselves the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. The Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. Now, maybe you guessed by the name, maybe you've seen this story on LizWheeler.com already. These, this group, and you can see the picture on the screen, and I do apologize for showing that to you, but I wanted you to get an idea of exactly what we're talking about here. These are uh, drag queens that masquerade as Catholic nuns. Yes, it's so sacrilegious. Some of the things actually that we're gonna be talking about, um, as a Catholic, as a Christian myself, I actually have a hard time saying because I feel so irreverent even verbalizing the word, even describing what's happening here. But I think that it's really important 
that we do describe exactly what's happening here, that we understand um, what the LA Dodgers are honoring as they honor this group, right? And I, when I say that we understand, um, what I mean by that, and you can see some of the pictures here on the on the screen of these transgender strippers dressed like uh, gay versions of perverted Catholic nuns. I mean, it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart, and it's so grotesque to see this. So grotesque. I feel like we uh, we I don't know need to go to confession or need to throw holy water or something on this. Just looking at it, but. We do have to understand exactly what what this group is doing the same way that we have had to describe what the abortion procedure is, as horrifying and grotesque as that procedure is, the reality of what it is is actually eye-opening to a lot of people who might otherwise be able to, um, I don't know, make a euphemism out of what abortion is and just call it choice, or the way that we have had to describe critical race theory as it's racist. It teaches white children that they're bad because of the color of their skin and black children that they're oppressed because of the color of their skin. Or the way that we've had to open these pornographic books that um, schools are reading to children or that public libraries are offering to little elementary school kids. And we've had to look at the pages and the graphic drawings and the, the quote unquote queer sex that children are being taught through these pornographic books. We've had to kind of go into this black hole in order to make sure that the left doesn't defeat us at this narrative, that we aren't trying to be so genteel, we aren't trying to be so um, discreet and polite that what we say loses its impact. And so that's that's kind of what I want to do today. That's the reason that I'm showing you some of these um, photos of these sisters of perpetual indulgence, these transgender strippers. But I want to I wanna share with you just a little bit more about who they are. Um, their motto, this group's motto is go and sin some more, which is a perversion of the biblical admonition to go and sin no more. That was obviously something that Jesus told all of us, go and sin no more. So they have perverted that into go and sin some more. They prominently display a pride flag on their website. And the reason that um, this group has grown in prominence, especially on the national level, is because um, the LA Dodgers invited this group to come to a June 16th game and be honored as a contributing member of the community. In fact, this is what um, this is what the statement says. The Los Angeles chapter of the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence will receive this year's Community Hero Award for their countless hours of community service, ministry, and outreach to those on the edges, in addition to promoting human rights and respect for diversity and spiritual enlightenment. I read the, like, juxtapose that, what I just read, with the photos that I showed you two seconds ago. Like, how do you get that statement out of that photo? It's impossible. So after, after the LA Dodgers announced that they were gonna do this, actually, Senator Marco Rubio spoke out and said, you know, this is a perversion of, of Catholicism. This is really offensive to the Christians who not only play on your team, but the Christian fans who watch the game of baseball. What are you doing? And the LA Dodgers disinvited the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. Of course, when they disinvited, I was kind of surprised, honestly. Usually, corporations and businesses or organizations and enterprises don't, um, don't change their minds. Usually, they are more afraid of the LGBTQ lobby than they are of consumer outrage because the LGBTQ lobby is so cutthroat, like they will ruin your reputation in an instant. They will be savage in destroying you and branding you as an evil, hateful bigot. And these organizations really fear that. So I was surprised when the LA Dodgers disinvited them, but my surprise was short-lived because then the LA Dodgers did honestly exactly what I expected them to do, which is caving to the LGBTQ lobby. They re-invited this um, transgender stripper group, and this is what they said. After much thoughtful feedback from our diverse communities, honest conversations within the Los Angeles Dodgers organization and generous discussions with the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, the Los Angeles Dodgers would like to offer our sincerest apologies to the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, members of the LGBTQ plus community and their friends and families. We have asked the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence to take their place on the field at our 10th annual LGBTQ plus Pride Night on June 16th. We are pleased to share that they have agreed to receive the gratitude of our collective communities for the life-saving work that they've done tirelessly for decades. In the weeks ahead, 
Here's the struggle session part of it, right? In the weeks ahead, we will continue to work with our LGBTQ plus partners to better educate ourselves, find ways to strengthen the ties that bind, and use our platform to support all of our fans who make up the diversity of the Dodgers family. Right, to find ways to support the fans that make up the Dodgers family, except the Christian fans, except the Catholic fans, except the religious fans who are offended to their core by this perversion of morality. This group whose motto is go and sin some more. So this is what they're doing, by the way. This is what they're doing. For Easter last month, they held some kind of event in San, Fran in San Francisco, and it featured musical theater, burlesque, peep shows, vaudeville, drag extravaganza, and some of San Francisco's most notorious memories, such as the lusty lady venue and a male transgender stripper version of the Rockettes. And the name is uh, features a piece of male genitalia that, that rhymes with the beginning of the Rockettes. I will allow you to use your imagination to figure out what that might be. The Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence also hosts an annual Hunky Jesus contest. That's the horrible image that you're seeing right now on your screen. If you're listening to the show, you can go to lizwheeler.com and you can see all of these photos. I actually think it's important that we do, even though I feel like I need to bleach my mind after watching, uh, after seeing these images and reading what they do. We do need to understand exactly what's going on here. So if you haven't already seen these or if you're listening to this show, go to lizwheeler.com, look at what the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence actually do, who they are. They had a Jesus and Mary themed strip tease. Like, does that shock you to your very core? Like, it's one thing if a group isn't practicing Christian, right? It's one thing if a group isn't a practicing Catholic, but to be so publicly demeaning and degrading and revolting towards people who are Christian, who worship Jesus. This is what, this is the core of what this group is and the LA Dodgers are honoring them as a, as a community hero, as a community hero, as if that's bad enough. This, those, those two examples that I give actually aren't the most offensive thing that this transgender group has done. I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about that in just a second, but first, guys, you have to get four Patriots because we have to be prepared for what's about to come. China has already screwed us over once with COVID. I don't want it to happen again. Our economy is still reeling from that. And right now the Chinese Communist Party is doing something weird. They're hoarding massive amounts of food, like two thirds of the globe's corn reserves and half of its wheat. And China just lies when they're asked, well, why are you hoarding food? The real reason they're doing this is because China thinks that we are on the verge of a global food shortage. And China's the world's number one food importer. They rely on the rest of the world to keep their people fed. So they can't afford a shortage or else what, they're gonna have riots in the streets of their country. And so the question that we should be asking is what does this mean for us, for Americans like you and me? And the answer is two words, food shortages. These global food shortages are going to negatively impact you and me here in the United States of America. That's why you must stock up on Four Patriots Survival Food. I highly recommend you begin your own stockpile of Four Patriots Survival Food kits. The kits are compact, they stack easily, they have different breakfasts, lunches, and dinners. And right now you can get 10% off your first purchase of Four Patriots Survival Food by typing my promo code, Liz, at checkout. Just go to fourpatriots.com Use my code, Liz, to get 10% off your first purchase of 4Patriots Survival Food. That's 4Patriots.com, promo code Liz. So a couple years ago, the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence toured 13 different gay bars, mocking and ridiculing and degrading the Stations of the Cross. They did this dressed as the Virgin Mary and Ma Mary Magdalene and other biblical women. Imagine... Imagine running into this. Imagine going to a baseball game with your family and seeing this group. Like it shocks the sensibility. And these, these by the way, the same people who tell us that Target isn't targeting your children, that this, these clothes are just for the children of queer people. They're the same people that are like, oh, these, this transgender stripper gang, they're just, they're just community heroes. Really? I, I don't even believe that the people saying that believe it. I don't even believe it. There was a book about this group. It was titled Queer Nuns. The author's name is Melissa Wilcox. This is how she described the members of this group. A congregation 
this is really graphic, by the way. If you have children in the room, you're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna either turn this down, put it in an AirPod, or go in another room. And some of you may not even wanna listen to this. You'll have to be the judge of that. I always say, I promise not to censor things because I promise not to make assumptions about your sensibility. If you're like me, you want to actually hear this information even as it's so insanely grotesque. But I guess I just gave you one of what the left would call a trigger warning, but you'll see why in just a second. This is what Melissa Wilcox describes um, this group as a congregation blessed by a dildo dipped in poppers. Poppers is a drug um, that's prevalent in the gay community that uh, reduces sexual inhibitions, increases sexual drives, and intensifies the sensation of sex. And now you can see why I gave you the trigger warning. This group is being honored by the LA Dodgers. This group is being honored. They once hosted a condom mass where participants vow to use protection. Let's contrast this for a second with a report from NBC back in 2015 that reported that baseball is the most Catholic sport. Baseball is the most Catholic sport. So this group is not just anti-Christian, they're specifically um, they're specifically anti-Catholic, right? Because they're mocking and ridiculing and degrading and reviling Catholic sisters, Catholic nuns, by, by dressing up as transgender, quote unquote, nuns. And baseball is the most Catholic sport. So you have to ask, is this a coincidence or is it not a coincidence? The obvious answer here is that it, of course, is not a coincidence. But here's my question. I don't mean to put any of the players on the LA Dodgers roster on the spot, but the only people that have more influence than the consumers, the people watching the LA Dodgers, over the decisions that the executives make are the players themselves, right? The players themselves. If, if baseball is, in fact, the most Catholic sport, then where are the Catholic players speaking out and saying, well, wait a second, wait a second. Tolerance is fine, right? Inclusion is fine, as long as it's defined the way that you and I define them and not the way that the DEI overlords define them. But at what point do these players who are Christians and Catholics say, we're not gonna participate in this game on June 16th if you're honoring someone that's reviling the faith that we hold dear? Where are these people? I mean, think about the LA Dodgers in general. Think about Vin Scully. Like, is there a more famous baseball commentator? And I know he's retired now, but what was he as famous for? Not just baseball, his Catholic faith. His Catholic faith. He prayed, he went to mass, he worshiped God. And now the LA Dodgers are doing this? Do you want to know some of the other baseball greats who were also Catholics? Babe Ruth was Catholic. Yogi Berra was Catholic. There are famous baseball players from every team, not just the LA Dodgers and not just people of the past who are Catholic. There are, there are members of the LA Dodgers roster right now. And like I said, I'm not sitting here trying to put these people in an awkward spot. I understand that they work for a woke organization. And so I didn't know going into this show whether... I should say the names of the specific active players on the LA Dodgers roster who have Bible verses in the bio of their Twitter account. Or whether I should simply insinuate it. But we have to call these people to action. If you are a Christian and you're associated with the roster of the LA Dodgers, please speak up. Please use your position of influence. Because what the LA Dodgers is doing right now is they're alienating your livelihood. They're alienating every Christian family, every Catholic Christian family who watches the game of baseball. And if you can, this, this, it's the same sort of thing as Target. I'm not trying to be boycott happy here. I wish we didn't have to boycott any corporation. It's a pain. But if we look at what Budweiser did, what Bud Light did with Dylan Mulvaney, and we think that warrants a boycott, and then we look at what Target did, what Target is doing with their pride display, targeting children, queering children with merchandise designed by a Satanist. And we say, okay, that's a million times worse than Bud Light and we should boycott Target too. How then can we look at Major League Baseball and the LA Dodgers and think it's okay to consume the, the entertainment that they're creating, the sport that they are playing? 
We can't. If you look at the reality of this transgender stripper group that they're honoring as community heroes, it is grotesque. And the LA Dodgers, what cowards caving to this neo-Marxist, queer theory, anti-Christian group of hateful bigots, all because what, you're afraid is being labeled as not a trans, as being labeled a transphobe? Good gracious, what a bunch of cowards, absolute cowards here. Speaking of cowards, the next video that I want to show you, this college student is decidedly not a coward, but her professor is. This college student says that she wrote a proposal for um, one of her classes, and because she used the term biological woman, she was not just downgraded, she was docked her entire grade. Take a listen to this. I got a zero on a project proposal in my class because I used the term biological women, which is apparently not allowed anymore. She even said it was a good project proposal, um, but I got a zero because I use this term that's exclusionary and not allowed anymore, so. And I 100% know that this is like the most biased grade ever because my project is about transgenders competing in biological women's sports. How am I supposed to do my final project if I can't use the word biological women, but that's what my project is about? So, Unreal, but also believable, right? Exactly. That's what I thought too. The difference between this scenario and the innumerable number of uh, incidents where conservative students are discriminated against at college is this professor just out and out admitted it and in writing. She said, you're not allowed to use the word biological women because it is exclusionary and it furthers heteronormity. So if you believe in science, if you believe in biology, if you believe in chromosomes, if you believe that there's man and woman and nothing else, then what, you're not allowed to, you're not allowed to go to college? You're not allowed to say that in class? It, unbelievable, but also believable in our culture. Um, and this girl did not cave. She did not cave. She's standing up for real women. She's standing up for biological women. The term biological women is actually redundant. We've just been um, coerced into using it because the left claims that trans, quote unquote transgender women, biological men dressed up as women, are also real women. So we have to clarify, no, 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 a real woman is a biological woman. Um, imagine sending your child to school. Imagine sending your child to college, paying these colleges tens, 15, 20, $50,000 a year to be told this, to be told this. Um, kudos to this girl for standing strong, but she's growing to be increasingly um, not unpopular, but there's the people like her are few and far between because our young generation is being indoctrinated by the likes of Lizzo. Lizzo is, and I know there are some people who watch this show who think that I'm too hard on Lizzo, and I promise you that I'm going to be extremely hard on Lizzo <laughs> based on this next clip. At a recent Lizzo concert, Lizzo uh, got political on stage and talked about transgender ideology, but as it relates specifically to children undergoing trans surgeries, and I won't leave you to guess which position she took. I'll let you hear it for yourself. Take a listen. And anybody who comes to a Lizzo show should know that I am for people to have the right to have I 
dedicated to all of y'all. Let's have a good time, okay? Okay, so this this video is actually exactly why I um, I think it's imperative that we don't allow Lizzo to get away with glorifying morbid obesity. And I say glorifying morbid obesity because I want to make this clear. I thought this was very obvious and very clear, but just for the sake of clarity, I will make it even clearer than it already was. I have nothing against people who are fat. That, that should go without saying. Nothing against people who are fat. It doesn't take away your dignity or your value. And my issue with Lizzo isn't that she's fat. My issue with Lizzo is that she's glorifying morbid obesity. She's encouraging this in children. And by doing this, she's doing it in a very deliberate way. She is attempting to destroy objective reality. She's attempting to redefine um, what it means to be healthy. And you can't just redefine what it means to be healthy, right? When you are morbidly obese, you are more likely to have a heart attack. You're more likely to have diabetes. It takes many years off your life. Our ERs are clogged with people who are there for emergencies related to being morbidly obese. It is simply fact. It is simply reality that morbid obesity is unhealthy. And what Lizzo is doing, she's not just fat. She's not just sitting there being fat. She's not just whatever. She's actively being a propaganda arm trying to convince people, young people in this country, that it's that morbid obesity is healthy and that it's beautiful. And she's using this term beautiful, saying I'm the new beauty standard as a way to try to warp young people's minds into thinking that being fat is, uh, is, is, is beautiful because beautiful encompasses the word healthy. We don't often look at something that is sick or that is malfunctioning and say that it has inherent beauty to it, unless we're talking about the dignity of, if it's a person that we're talking about, the dignity of a person's soul. But she's trying to rewire children's brains to think that something that we all intuitively know is unhealthy, being morbidly obese, is beautiful and fine and something to aspire to. And I have said over and over again that Lizzo is doing this not because she's insecure. She's not doing it because just to get clicks and attention. She's doing it as part of a concerted effort that goes hand in hand with a transgender ideology that's doing the exact same thing and using the exact same playbook, trying to rewire children's brains into thinking, just because you were born a boy doesn't mean you have to be a boy. Just because you're born a girl doesn't mean you have to identify as a girl. I. This is the reason that Lizzo is so dangerous is because she's actually replicating the playbook that the transgender ideology is using to destroy objective reality. She's replicating that and using it on an issue that a lot of people feel very vulnerable about. A lot of people who struggle with weight are very insecure about the way that they look and the way that they feel. And they actually are vulnerable to falling prey to the narrative that Lizzo is propagating, but what they surrender, what they sacrifice if they fall prey to this is in exchange for being told by Lizzo that obesity is something to aspire to, that it's healthy and that it's beautiful, they're sacrificing objective reality. And once you do that, once you do that on one topic, it's a whole heck of a lot easier to do it on other topics. On other topics like exactly what Lizzo was talking about in this video, topics like sex and bodily mutilation surgery for children, which she supports which she supports. Reminder, guys, reminder, please don't forget to sign up for my brand new email list. It's great. I am so appreciative of everybody who has already dropped me their email address. Um, but send me the email because we have a ton of stuff like the grotesque photos of um, that transgender stripper group that we post on the website so that you guys can decide, you know, I do want to watch this. I don't want to watch this. I want to watch it, you know, under my own control. We post that kind of stuff on the website um, all the time, sometimes before we even talk about it on the show. So go to lizwheeler.com, lizwheeler.com, drop me your email address, and I'll put you on the list. Thank you for watching today. Thank you for listening. I'm Liz Wheeler. This is The Liz Wheeler Show. Ready, give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button below, and ring the bell to make sure you never miss a video.